and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jane Ross, a MIA Education Lead for Zoom Video, and I'm joined today by Peter Gillis from Learnabate, who Zoom is a proud patron member, and Nigel Payne, who will be discussing their research project about remotivating learners. Please join the conversation by submitting your questions throughout the session. Peter and Nigel, over to you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, hi, my name is Peter Gillis. Uh, I'm a lead researcher at Learnovate, which is a research and innovation center dedicated to learning technologies. I'm very pleased to be joined here by Nigel Payne, who shall introduce himself. I will indeed, Peter. Thank you very much. I'm a patron member of Learnovate, and I'm on this research project team. So I'm speaking from the heart when I talk to you, but more generally, I, I teach, I do research, I write, and I work in consultancy with large organizations, usually about the link between learning technology and performance. That's essentially my, my role. Thank you, Nigel. And, uh, you know, I think Nigel's downplaying himself a little bit there. If you've been more than five minutes involved in learning and development, you know who Nigel Payne is. So, as I say, we're very pleased to have him here with us today. And what we'd like to discuss with you is this idea of the project Remotivate that we're currently working together on. And it's around sustaining learner motivation <clears throat> in this rapidly evolving landscape that we find ourselves in. To give you a tiny bit of background, Learnovate, as I mentioned, is a research and innovation center. We're hosted at Trinity College Dublin. Trinity is ranked number one in Ireland in terms of universities and is actually ranked in the top 100 worldwide. And we work with Trinity College and in Trinity College to basically deliver excellence in the field of educational technology. This is us. We're about 22 strong in terms of staff covering these disciplines that you can see across the bottom incorporating learning science, cognitive science, technology, user experience, and innovation. And all of these need to work together in a multidisciplinary way to deliver the solutions we seek to deliver. Last week, we entered into phase three of the center, and our mandate going forward is this area of the future of work and learning. And you know, Industry 4.0 has only been with us since the year 2000 and yet already it's been seen as not fit for purpose. Industry 4.0 was this whole idea of digital transformation, but still very much embedded in the idea of winner takes all, and very much in that kind of land grab kind of motivation. And we understand post COVID that that's really not where we need to go. We know we have one planet and that we have to look after the citizens on that planet. And so Industry 5.0 is taking a much more human-centered, sustainable approach to revolution in industrial terms. So with that mandate, we find that our work has taken on a new level of significance. On this slide, you can see basically the areas that we focus in on in terms of our research led by industry. And they are supported by these four pillars of accelerated digital transformation, personalization, soft skills, and one I'd like to focus in on this morning, this idea of the learner in the future of work. And in terms of the learner in the future of work, focusing in on this idea of learner motivation and how do we support that motivation? Nigel. So, thank you, Peter. This project, was not a piece of abstract research. It started with a real problem, which every single person sitting, listening to us now is well aware of, that we suddenly had to turn on a sixpence. Particularly academic institutions, but all educational institutions had to respond to the COVID emergency and rapidly shift delivery from face-to-face -to, -face to online. I teach on a doctoral program at the University of Pennsylvania, and we had five days to put a week's face-to-face -face learning online using, as Jane will naturally expect, using Zoom at, at the time. And this is challenging. So students had to suddenly adjust to different kinds of assignments, different kinds of community, different kinds of lectures. 
And although Al Hashimi in this research article talks about online being the future of education, many students did not necessarily agree with that statement. In fact, many felt it was an absolutely difficult and challenging environment to work in. So the question for this project is, how might we scaffold and sustain learner motivation and really create a hybrid and remote environment that is vibrant, rich, and an absolutely fantastic learning experience and not something second class or something that students feel betrayed by their institutions for being forced to work in. So what, what was that initial impact responding to the emergency? Well, students certainly spent less time lectures, meetings, studying, but their academic tutors were not ready, had no time to prepare, and often rushed into the process without a lot of thought. So one hour in the classroom became one hour lecture online. And as everyone knows, that is uh, tedium in the extreme. And also it meant that there were all sorts of malpractice going on in examination and assessments. No one could really adjust to that environment fast enough. And as for caring for siblings, um, how people could focus and not be distracted, how they could build in peer interaction, all those things were big question marks. So the experience was one of a lack of care, sometimes working with inferior technology, being distracted, not having any kind of support from peers, and not really being able to differentiate, being at home, eating your breakfast on the table, and being at, on, a, on a program, on a course. So these things were really serious. And the, pro the project was born of something that was a crisis really in higher education. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we started to do was to look at different frames through which we could look at learner motivation. And the first one we picked was a very, very well-known frame of motivation called self-determination theory. And it, essentially, self-determination theory determines motivation around these three areas of autonomy, enthusiasm and consent to participate, uh, the competence, a feeling of being capable of being in a competent environment, working with other competent people, and then that sense of community and engagement. So we could judge the performance of online and hybrid using self-determination theory. And some of you will know self-determination theory in, in its form that was popularized by Dan Pink when he talked about uh, autonomy, mastery and purpose, where purpose and relatedness, Dan Pink picked purpose, but it, it, uh, relatedness does include purpose. It's having a reason to get up in the morning, a reason to keep studying, a reason to continue with your program. And that was lacking often during the emergency. But the second frame, that we thought was going to be very helpful is the thing called expectancy value theory. And that is really determining the expectations for success. So whether people can do well, whether they will be able to attain their goals, the intrinsic value, in other words, their personal enjoyment from being part of it all, and then the utility value, whether this will help them in their life and go forward with their goals. And then finally, the value for money thing, the, the, the cost that they have to invest set against other things that they could have spent that money on. So we thought these two gave us a real insight and a frame by which we could judge the success of the project as we went through. And what we wanted to do, just to repeat once more, was to sustain and scaffold learner motivation. So how can we make this work in a way that isn't just getting through the day, but in a way that is building excellence and good practice? What could the research help us with? So in turn, what that meant was that we ended up doing something more complex than I, I, I've explained so far. And Peter's 
going to do the difficult stuff. So Peter, take us through the four domains and the 24 subdomains. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks many for that. So yeah, so when we had decided on our motivational lenses, and we set about researching this area, and through basically an academic literature review, over two months, we, we basically investigated how might we structure a cohesive and substantial network or framework around the learner. And in turning to the literature, we ultimately identified that there are four layers that surround any learner when they're in a hybrid or online environment. And basically those four layers comprise of at the center level, this idea of the learner's readiness, the learner's readiness to engage with an online experience as opposed to a face-to-face -face experience. So we need to support the learner in terms of their own readiness. Outside that, again, we talk about their environment and the environment that they will find themselves working in, in terms of um, an online or hybrid scenario. And we can see just one there, this idea of involvement, going back to self-determination theory and relatedness. There's an aspect there that within that environment, is there going to be an opportunity to be involved with others? Moving on out to the blue lens, we see there that it's the whole idea of the activities and how might we best structure those activities to support these learners in this online and hybrid world. And ultimately, on out to the purple there, which is this whole idea of the organization or institution and its staff and how they will support everything else that happens within this environment. So having identified these 24 areas, our next thought going back to our working group was, how can we do this? And what we wanna do is apply the two lenses Nigel's spoken about already of self-determination theory and expectancy value theory, and then also to leverage Keller's work in ARCS. Again, around the whole idea of motivation for learning and talking about attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. And to develop out using these three lenses, a solution in each of these 24 subdomains. Our next piece of work was to decide how is this all going to come together? So we spent some time looking at frameworks that exist in similar spaces uh, all around the world at the moment. And in analyzing those frameworks, we were able to basically plot out what these frameworks consist of and the type of areas they look at. This exercise led us to hone in on two particular frameworks, the ELF framework from New Zealand and the ISTE framework from the United States. And then moving on from there, we really felt that the ISTE <clears throat> framework resonated very well with what we were trying to achieve with our research project. So the ISTE uh, framework, consists of this idea of a domain. In this case, the domain that they're looking at is the area of students. Um, but what you can see around that center circle are the subdomains. And each of these subdomains is then basically spelled out and understood with a definition. And they also provide, as you can see in this case, four examples or activities of how you might basically develop, in this case, the area of digital citizenship. And we felt this was a really nice model for us to think about because it's not prescriptive. It is a support framework rather than a rule book, which fits with what we were trying to do with our own. So we thought, yes, let's build on this concept of the ISTE framework to develop out for our own 24 subdomains where we'll be able to supply a similar level of activities and examples to be followed. Our next step within this working group is to take a thin slice through the four layers. And we've identified the four subdomains you can see here as the focus for our next piece of work. And using those motivational lenses, we will now develop out a framework just for these four areas to go and trial it uh, with our working partners within the group. Ultimately, it will pan out to something like this. Um, and you can see here that over the 24 subdomains within the four layers, we will be providing a practical, usable framework that we would see deployed uh, into industry that will guide people 
and give them a direction to support their students in this online hybrid environment, reinforced by the trials we'll have done with our working group and also from the academic literature that has informed the, uh, the framework in the first place. Ultimately, then, when we have this framework finished, we will trial it with our working group partners. And you've seen these logos uh, on a couple of slides throughout this presentation. It's really important to mention that as a research center, we're an applied research center. We're not about building academic research for the sake of having it in publications or basically sitting on dusty shelves. It's here to do good in the near term. These are our partners on this particular project, and we'll be trialing this framework with them and ultimately to distribute it on wider than the group and on out into the community. You can see the ISTE logo as well as at the bottom there. And what's really interesting about that is that through Nigel, we've made contact with ISTE and they're actually incredibly interested in the work we're doing. And we look forward to welcoming them into the group uh, as we move forward. If you find that any of this is interesting to you, We'd be more than happy for you to uh, basically get in touch with us uh, through Jane or even come to us directly. And uh, we'd be happy to hear your feedback, both positive and constructive, I have to say, in terms of uh, where we go with this framework next. Um, and Nigel, maybe hand over to you for any last words. Yeah, I, th the point is, Peter, that this framework will be validated in the doing and the using of it. And therefore, the more people who look at it, uh, see whether it's practically helpful for them in improving that student experience and increasing motivation, the better. So we genuine, this is a genuine offer to come into partnership with Learnervate and with the Remotivate project. We both think it's incredibly important and it's been done in a very research oriented, thoughtful, scholar practitioner way. And that makes it, I, I think, something that we can all build on. And we'll end up, I hope, and modestly, with changing the world by changing the, the learner experience. So thank you very much for participating with us today. Thank you. Peter and Nigel, thank you so much for your time. And thank you all for joining us. As Peter mentioned, if you are interested in participating in the research, please do not hesitate to reach out to either myself or the Renovate directly. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you, Peter and Nigel, for that excellent discussion. It's great to know that the research bears out what so many of us as teachers experience every day. It is important to our community, especially in the past few years, where we all have struggled to keep students both engaged and motivated. Also, the community-wide engagement to trial these different frameworks has the potential to produce a really insightful outcome. I look forward to hearing more about that soon. Thanks again for joining this session, everyone. Now, please exit this area and return to the lobby where I will meet you to share more information on the next set of concurrent sessions. I'll see you soon.